Hi, this is Zushio and welcome back to Echo. It's time for another short story. So let's, let's check this one out. So the last couple that we had, they kind of focused on TJ and a little bit on uh, Jenna. There's been some Chase stuff and a little bit of Leo. We haven't seen any of Flynn in these stories yet. So it's going to be interesting to see whether he shows up later as well. This episode is called Phone. It should give us the date. So we'll get an idea of how time has passed. It's May 2020. Okay, a lot of time has passed. I pull up to the old fast food joint in my shitty old truck, the fan blasting hot desert air. I look around the sunbaked parking lot, but I don't see Chase's car yet. Taking out my phone, I check the time and scan through my messages. He told me he got out for lunch 15 minutes ago, but it's 20 minutes later now. There's a little pang of worry, mostly because I know how shitty a driver Chase is, but he's usually late, so I quash that. I give my pits a quick check. Driving around with a broken AC is fucking torture in this weather, but the antiperspirant seems to be holding up alright. After giving them a quick sniff, I recline and put my paws behind my head to air out and maybe catch a quick nap. Is this Leo? Sure, it's a pain in the ass having to come down here when I'm this tired. Dad's working me to the goddamn bone, and the restaurant is on the opposite side of Peyton. But seeing Chase makes it worth it. It isn't often that we get to have lunch together. The lunch hour being as short as it is only gives us about 20 minutes to really talk. I'm starting to doze off when I hear a knock on my window. I give a little start and open my eyes, squinting against the desert sun reflecting off a car bumper in front of me. Looking to my left, Chase's adorable otter face greets me through the window, grinning. All of the bad mood I had earlier evaporates away, as if it were water under this fucking sun, and Chase steps back as soon as I open the door. Hey babe. I step out and put him into a hug. Hey. He says it against my chest, rubbing his nose in like he always does, while I run my paws around his back. Man, that swim team is really slimming you down. I pinch his sides appreciatively. He wiggles under my fingers and returns the favour to my own waist. And you're getting squishy. Hey. I pretend to be offended, giving him a mock growl, letting it vibrate from my chest into his nose. Wouldn't be that way if you didn't keep picking fat factories like this. No more football doesn't help either. I like it. I'm actually really proud of him right now. He used to be so worried about people seeing us like this, and now he's hugging me like no one's around. I decide to go in a bit further and give him a quick lick on one of those stubby cute ears, and he gives a little shiver and laughs. Stop, let's go inside. It's too hot out here. As he turns away from me, he lets his thick tail push up against my crotch, shoving my junk up against my body. It actually hurts more than it feels good. He really doesn't get how strong that thing is, but it gets me going anyway. After we put in our orders and get our drinks, we both stare down at a greasy table, Chase swiping an old fry off his booth. You know, I'd go to a different restaurant if we had time and I had the money. It's fine, as long as we're not doing it every day. I stretch back, purposefully puffing my chest out so my already tight shirt hugs my body even tighter. It's not lost on Chase, as he gazes at the chest ruff poking out through my shirt, and I'm satisfied as I see a longing look come across his face. That's not fair, Leo. I've got another three hours of school. Just showing you what's waiting for you at home. He rolls his eyes before putting out his phone. Hey, no texting. Let's talk. What do you want to talk about? He doesn't put it away. Well, I toy with the straw in my cup. Is now a good time to bring it up? I always get annoyed when I see people making a scene at restaurants. It's like the perfect place to tell someone it's over, or that they're gay. But Chase seems to be in a good mood. It's probably as good a time as any. Have you decided on what you're going to do after school? Chase finally puts his phone down on the table and closes his eyes, sighing. And it makes me nervous. Don't worry about that right now, Leo. I've still got a few months to decide. Fuck, how can he not worry, when all that's going to do is make me worry? And the way he says it, it sounds like he's already made the decision. I open my muzzle again, but he stands up, straightening in his shirt as he does. I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I grunt, and he heads off toward the back of the restaurant while I slump in my seat. The idea of Chase leaving is fucking terrifying. We've been this way for the past two and a half years, and the way he's treating this decision, like it's a fucking annoyance, makes me all the more frustrated. I feel like this relationship has only really come into its own over the past year. Mostly because Chase turned 18, and we don't have to worry about the stupid shit anymore. His phone buzzes a few times, 
and I look at it out of habit, then it really starts buzzing, and I realise someone's calling him. Jared. A face that I don't recognise pops up on the screen. It's a wolf of some kind, a grey wolf, I think, and he's ridiculously handsome, model handsome actually. I furrow my brows, and then look back behind me at the bathroom, but Chase isn't there. Fuck it, I could just say I was picking it up for him anyway. I grab the phone and stab the green pickup symbol before holding it up to my ear. Since Chase has the stubby muzzle thing going for him, his phone doesn't pull out like mine, so I have to try and direct my voice out the side of my mouth. Who's this? I curse silently as I realised that if I wanted the guy to talk, that probably wasn't the best way to do it. And sure enough, I hear a click as he hangs up. I feel my heart beating fast as I pull the phone down from my ear. I stare at the screen for a while and barely realise it goes black. There's no way he'd do this, would he? I slide my finger around the blank screen for a while and then turn it back as I navigate to the texts. Sure enough, there's a thread under the name Jared with over a thousand texts. My throat's drier as I tap on it and look at most of the recent messages. Hey boy, where you at? I miss you. Call in now. Hey. I whip my head up and see Chase staring down at me, an exasperated grin on his muzzle. I almost lower my ears in shame at being caught but I catch myself before I do. He's the one who has some explaining to do. Who the fuck's this? I shove the phone into his face, realising that I've lost my chance at approaching this delicately. I also notice a few heads turning our way that I've suddenly become the guy I didn't want to be. Chase takes his phone and quickly sits down, his eyes wired as he's making a shushing shape with his mouth. That only pisses me off more, but at the same time I feel something really sharp and painful in my chest. Is this really happening? So you are leaving. Running off to fuck some other wolf. Now people are really staring, and Chase winces, and he ducks his head lower to the table. It's a joke, Leo, calm down. A joke? I don't understand what that means exactly, but I'm starting to. I don't say anything, so Chase keeps going. Jenna, we, we're just trying to have some fun. I was starting to realise this probably wasn't the best time, but... Jenna? That explains it. But the anger and betrayal I'm feeling doesn't go away like it should. Now I'm livid. So you're playing this stupid game of keeping me guessing whether or not you're going to ditch me next year, and then you pull this shit? I raise my voice for the last part, and there's a noticeable lull in the conversations all around us. A few people glance at us and then look away, but I can tell all their ears are pointed in our direction. Outside, Leo. He says it like he's talking to a toddler, and then stands up and goes straight for the door. Again, I'm pissed off even more, the way he's treating me like a little kid. I deserve it, I know, but I can't help it. I follow him out into the hot air, again, trying to ignore the heads turning as I walk by. The hell's wrong with you? He whirls on me. I'm shot, he looks almost as angry as I am. Me? You know, I told Jenna that there was no way in hell you'd fall for this, since you already knew how I felt about you. I'm the one that should be fucking offended that you'd think that. That's not fair. You wanted a reaction from me and you got one. Are you happy? I fold my arms and glare at him. Chase folds his arms too and slumps against the wall, looking away from me. He's sad and it fucking hurts. I was looking forward to this all day and he probably was too. It's almost enough to make me take everything back. Almost. Then Jenna shows up, her light blonde fur almost making her hard to look at as she lights up under the sun. She comes running over from the parking lot to hop up onto the sidewalk, standing next to Chase. I should have known how strange it was that Chase would park so far away from me. She's been sitting there this whole time, probably watching us through the windows. What's wrong, Leo? The glee in her voice brings it all back, and I realise who I'm really mad at. She probably pushed him into this whole thing. This was your idea. I reach out and grab the phone from Chase's paw and hold it out to her. She's still grinning though the initial happiness morphs into a more condescending look that makes me grip my teeth. It's a prank, Leo. Making me think I just lost my otter's a prank? If this is a fucking joke, then you need to learn how to make one first. Why don't you learn how to take one? How's I supposed to take that? Just laugh and shrug and say, well, fuck, so much for that. Is that what you expected? I throw my arms out in a big, exaggerated shrug. Jenna frowns and lowers her ears. Actually... We just thought you wouldn't fall for it. At least, not this hard. I mean, come on. I copped that from the cover of some teen magazine. It was my number too, if you didn't notice. She continues to frown at me. Chase is still looking away from us, and I feel like the big arsehole that's ruined everyone's fun. It's 
this just wasn't a good time, alright? No. No. Why the fuck's she doing this right now? I just wanted to talk to Chase, alone. I look back into the restaurant, and the server behind the counter is looking at us, a tray of food in her paws. Some of the patrons are staring too. Like I give a fuck. What the hell are you doing here anyway? Semester ended last week? So you're staying at home for the summer? I give her a confused look. Of course not. I'm staying with Emily. I take a deep breath and close my eyes. I'd honestly be happy to hear Jenna was going to be around for the summer if she hadn't introduced herself in such a fucked up way. I hear her give a heavy sigh and I open my eyes to see her rubbing her head like I'm just the biggest disappointment. You need to calm down, Leo. How can we ever have fun if you're exploding all the time? I grit my teeth again and I have to work not to snarl. Telling me to calm down is the worst thing you can do right now. I'm tired, I'm hot, and I just wanted to have lunch with Chase. I glance at the phone and see it's already 20 past the hour, which means Chase has to leave now. I squeeze the phone hard in my paw, but Jenna doesn't seem to notice. You're overreacting. I feel something snap inside, and rather than chuck the phone in Jenna's direction, I spin and start to throw it down onto the sidewalk. Is it getting darker or is it just me? I realise at the last second that it's Chase's phone that I'm throwing and I try to grab it back up at the same time that I throw it. I only succeeded in clipping a corner which sends it into a flip before it hits the concrete. The crunch sound along with the sparkling spray of glass tells us all that I just smashed the phone to hell. I wince and flatten my ears. I stare at the little black square for a while feeling both of their eyes in the back of my head. I curse myself Though I've said it enough times before that I know that Chase recognises the phrase and apologies if my pronunciation was awful. Slowly, I turn around, my face flushing as I try to meet eyes with him. Otter, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll buy you a... I'm going to Pueblo, Leo. He's looking at me now and his hazel eyes feel like they're piercing right through me. I stare at him for a second, as if I didn't understand, but I feel my stomach sink even as I speak. What? He's sucking his cheeks to stop himself from frowning, the way he does when he's trying not to cry. Jenna's silent, looking away, but my gut tells me she already knows this, and that starts to bring back some of the anger. What the hell are you talking about? I said I'm going to Pueblo in August. I got accepted in January. I don't know what to say. I feel like I've been punched in the stomach, and I can't get my air back to make the words. I say all I can manage. Chase. He turns away from me. I've got to go back. I'm already going to be late. Jenna looks over at me, and I finally see some remorse in her face before she jogs to catch up with Chase. I hear her start to apologise. I watch him go, desperately wanting to run up and pulling into my arms and telling him I'm sorry, but I know that'll probably make things worse. He likes to be left alone when he's pissed like this, but after dropping that bomb, I want to talk to him right now. No, we'll figure this out. I'll just talk to him once school lets out. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Just a few more hours. I watch them pull out of the parking lot, and I wish he'd look at me as they drive past, but he doesn't, and neither does Jenna. I hesitate, and then pick up Chase's phone, because he's going to need to recover some shit from it when I buy him a new one, and then hop in my truck. I sit there for a second, not sure what to do. I feel sick and angry, and tired, all at the same time. A lot of this is my fault. I punch the steering wheel. And that feels good, so I do it again, but then I realise that people are still staring at me through the windows. I flip them off before I put the truck into gear. Is this why Chase is leaving me? Because I can't control my fucking temper sometimes? No, not leaving me. Just, just working things out. As I'm driving down the road, the churning feeling in my gut finally gets to me, and I pull my phone out, looking up now and then to correct my steering. I type what I hope is the heartfelt apology. In the middle of it, I remember that his phone's sitting in my cup holder, fucking broken. I finally let out the style I've been holding back and throw my phone into the passenger seat, accidentally swerving and setting off a few honks. I grip the steering wheel with both paws, blinking furiously as the road starts to blur. No, no, I'm not going to cry. This will work out fine. We just need to talk like we always do. And even if he does leave, we'll work something out. I'm not going to fuck this up. I'm not going to lose my temper ever again. I'm not going to lose him. Oh, that was rough. 
so that was when Leo found out that Chase was going to go to university. But, yeah, that was, that was awkward. Okay, we're going to try and discover more in the next episode. This is Usho signing off, and hopefully I will see you next time.